Welcome back to Tracy and Gracie Becoming, episode 10. Episode 10. Yes. Crazy that we've been doing this for 10 weeks. Yeah. We say it every week, but it really does. It just, I, I mean, if you would have told me like a couple months back that I would be doing a podcast at all, I would have said you're crazy. Mm-hmm. So. I actually think about that a lot. I think about how many times like I've asked Mm-hmm. you and Griffin in the past to like be in a Facebook live with me yeah. or you know, come on secrets of the self-made and the it's a big no it's a hard no yeah. you guys don't want to be kind of in that spotlight and yeah. putting yourself out there um so well, mine was always like an anxiety thing like I never like I don't like public speaking I don't like talking in front of other people that I'm not comfortable with like I've always had that weird anxiety thing and so like way back when when you asked me to be on your podcast even I was like I wrote down literally everything I was gonna say because I was so nervous and then those we didn't record those with video and so I just read off of a script like for that episode I was so nervous and I was like I'm never doing this again. Like, I don't think I slept very well that night. And it was like, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't even a full episode. So it's just funny now that we're now in week 10 yeah. of our very own podcast that you probably couldn't have paid me enough money a and, year ago to do. And look at you now. Mm-hmm. You're becoming confident and yeah. really good at this. Yeah. So <laughs> we don't, um, we don't often know what it is that we're going to talk about too far ahead in Mm -hmm. advance it's always like I just have a belief that we'll know yeah and for the last 10 weeks that has proven to be true yeah and um so I love the fact that we kind of hold that belief that there's always something to share Mm -hmm. um and it has everything to do with being in this state of becoming. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to recognize that we often believe that lie that when we're becoming something else, it almost insinuates that we need to, you know, leave the other version of ourselves behind. And I I want to think about it differently. Like I don't have to, you know, intrinsically become something totally different. I don't have to be a completely different person in order to achieve the results that I want. It's, it is this ongoing state. It's like, it's a state of like learning and growing, Mm -hmm. not becoming somebody who I never was. I believe that it's really becoming more aware of who you really are and what you are really capable of when you don't get sabotaged, when you don't, you know, unknowingly, unintentionally listen to those saboteur narratives Mm -hmm. that are offered to us on a very regular basis. Yeah. 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 I think you're totally right. I definitely was, so blindsided by my saboteur thoughts and uh, limiting beliefs about public speaking or doing something like this. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, how's it going? What do you have planned for the week? <laughs> uh, well, we're halfway through the week at the at this recording. Yeah. And, um... But this is when my week gets busy this week. Oh, so. is it? It's so funny. I mm-hmm. think about this today is definitely hump day and by the Mm. time we get to this recording i feel like i'm over the hump and that's how i look usually yes but this week for whatever reason is like extra busy Hmm. but yeah there's i we have a lot to look forward to i'm hosting a cabbie show tonight um case you can't hear the dogs dogs. (laughs) they're out there running and barking at whoever is walking past our house right now. Mm -hmm. They're in training for the wiener dog races. um, This Sunday for us. Yeah. Miko's trying to take out his competition early by attacking Meatball this morning. So, yeah, that was fun. I almost lost a finger. Yeah, we were in the midst of a group coaching call. So, Gracie, because we all live in the same home, Gracie is in the dining room 
and mm -hmm. I am in my office and I can hear this like battle going on between the dogs and it did not sound pleasant. So I was just trying to keep my focus as I was hearing that go down. So yeah, it wasn't pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So but everybody's yes. fine. I still have my finger and Meatball still has his head. Yeah. So they will both be competing on Sunday. As far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, I guess. Yeah. But, um, and then what else? Oh, you've got your concert tonight. Yes. I have my Zach Bryan concert tonight. I literally have never been so excited for a concert ever in my life. So super excited yeah, i can't wait to hear all about it yeah and then friday i am heading to wasa wisconsin to celebrate uh, my roommates my old roommate's birthday and then saturday heading to hudson for my other college friend um she's doing a half marathon so i'm gonna go see that and then sunday is the wiener dog races so yeah busy busy yeah fun stuff mm-hmm yeah. Um, yeah, last week, you want to talk about? Yeah, well, this is the, this is why we are titling the episode Becoming Vigilant, um, because we had quite the experience last week. What was it, Thursday? Was it Thursday? I think it was, yeah, 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 Thursday. Right after the guys had left? Yeah. Or it was Wednesday night, and then Dad left Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So yeah. So, at one thirty ish in the morning, Thursday mm -hmm. morning. We were burglarized. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Which sounds very dramatic. Yeah. Um, it sounds scary. And I mean, what, it is scary. Yeah, but... it is scary. Um, so, but here's the thing. We didn't even know that we were burglarized. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> um, up until, like, way later that night. On so. Thursday. So it happened Wednesday night in the middle of the night. And then Thursday, I was leaving to go to dinner with some friends and I walked out to my car and it was like trashed. Like all of my stuff from my glove compartment and my center console were just thrown everywhere. And this was my dad's old car. And so he goes in there from time to time, like, I don't know, looking for papers like in the glove compartment or whatever. And so I was like half joking. I sent a picture like to my family and I was like, okay, which one of you went through my car and left everything everywhere? Like, this is ridiculous. I was like, or did somebody try to rob me last night? Like, half joking. And then I went to dinner and my dad called me and was like, um, where are you? <laughs> I was like, I'm out at dinner. Like, why? And he was like, you definitely were broken into last night. He was like, that wasn't me or Griffin and mom wouldn't have been out there like going through your things and like it then it was really obvious because like my stuff was scattered it wasn't like he was just like looking for something it wasn't just unorganized like it usually no, is no it was like everything was thrown all over the place in my front seat both seats and so I was like oh great that's cool because Griffin had left the night before and then he had just left to go up north for the weekend so that meant that us two were left alone <laughs> with the wiener dogs. <laughs> feeling robbed. <laughs> yeah, feeling robbed. Um, yeah, so we looked at our video footage. Yeah. We've got cameras that um, are, you know, pick up anything that's going on outside of the home. Yeah. And we found out that three to four people came down our driveway at 1.30 in the morning. They went through Griffin's car. They went through Gracie's car. Yeah. And the RV happened to be sitting in the driveway, hooked to my husband's truck. <laughs> um, and that they been so bad. Yeah, and they that was unlocked, and so they went through that. Um, so it's very unnerving to watch video footage of somebody going through your stuff. So two cars and yeah. the RV were unlocked, and so they had, you know. <laughs> free reign, easy yeah. access to our stuff and our um, cars they easily could have gotten into our garages from yeah, that yeah. um and then into our house if they really wanted to yeah so yeah thankfully they didn't want to because yeah we have dogs that are um outside of the wiener dogs we have <laughs> yeah. we have bigger dogs hunting dogs that are in the garage sleeping and guard we, dogs yeah we think that they <laughs> saw the light because these people were using flashlights 
and uh, started barking. So you it see them very them. quickly. It was run. really quick. They were really quick. Yeah, they ran up the driveway and left. Um, so, you know, this was whatever, 12 hours later after yeah. it had actually happened. Um, actually longer than that. But anyways, yeah. doesn't matter. Um, that we figure it all out. And so we called the police and they came out and filed a report and went on to tell us that there were numerous homes that were broken into, mm -hmm. um, some very, very close by and some, you know, a couple neighborhoods over, but they actually stole a couple vehicles mm -hmm. um, because what they're looking for are the keys to the vehicle. And um, yeah, and that's what was so unnerving when we realized that we had been like that people had been going through our stuff because we were like, why would they go through the effort of literally trashing my car? Like, what were they looking for? Because they didn't take anything. So I had a purse. As far as we know, yeah. Well, I had a purse in the back seat of my car, not the one I used. So, but there were probably like it was a decoy. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> just a purse that's been sitting in my car, and but it's kind of like shoved halfway under one of my seats, mm -hmm. and so like I could tell that it wasn't moved because it's been sitting in the same exact spot that I left it for I don't know how long. It's probably and still sitting there. It is. God. <laughs> Yeah. It's not my, I don't have my wallet in it or anything. But have you ever thought that that is like the attractor to somebody who's going around in a parking lot, looking in windows, trying to figure out which car they're going to break into? Don't you think that that's... Well, I do now. Then why is it still sitting there? Well, I forgot to grab it. I'll grab it oh, in a little God. bit. <laughs> but anyways, that's why it was so unnerving because we were like, why wouldn't they go through the purse? Like, to even check. Like, it was so weird. And so we were like, great, are we being targeted? Like, well, are they going to come back for, the, now that they know that the RV's gone, thinking that we're out of town or something, and it's just us two here? <laughs> yeah, they're probably thinking whoever is naive enough to leave their purse sitting in the back seat probably doesn't have anything worth stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it was it was freaky because then you just start running through all the scenarios and when right. the cop had come he then told us that no they're looking for keys that's why everything was like scattered and they didn't take anything because they were on a mission to find keys to steal cars or weapons is what the cop said and so yeah, yeah so it could have been really bad had the uh, keys to my husband's <laughs> truck. Yeah. I mean, I, he, he isn't somebody that's going to leave keys in his truck uh, just sitting there. But yeah. had they been there, they would have not only taken the truck, they would have taken the RV. RV. Like they would that have scored was, so big on us. That was fully <laughs> packed and ready to go up yeah. north. So, yeah, it could have been like the jackpot of all yeah. burglaries. Yeah, it's so crazy. And we know one of the people whose cars actually did get stolen and then... A, like a neighborhood over I was talking to somebody else and they were like yeah they went through our neighborhood too like they went through cars they did take a purse out of somebody's car and like went through that and then chucked it in the neighbor's yard and so it's just like it's things that you don't like actually think like you think your car sitting in your driveway especially how far out we are it's not like we're in the like center city of like the like yeah. where everybody is but it's just things that you don't really think that think that much about like right. your stuff going getting yeah and I and I've pondered this for a while like yeah. for the last few days like it isn't something we think about and so the gift and the opportunity of this actually happening mm -hmm. is so that we become more vigilant apparently yeah. it didn't affect you in the same way <laughs> because your purse is still sitting in the back seat of your car but I for me like I've been I, locking it uh, and all our so doors. So now they'll just break into your car. Now you'll have oh. that to deal with. Yeah. I'll take it out. Okay. So for me, I, I have been thinking about it as like, you know, what was there to learn from this? Mm -hmm. um, it's not very often that we have the RV in the, in the driveway, but probably not hooking up the RV until you're actually ready to go is a better practice. Mm -hmm. um, I actually... I don't know 
if having your doors locked or unlocked is a better practice. Yeah, we practice debated this for a while. Because if they were locked, they may have broken in. Now, the, these people wouldn't have because they didn't. They could have broken into Dad's truck and they chose not to. Um, but under, you know, other circumstances, that might not be the case. And, um, but I also am making sure that the garage door openers are being taken out of people's cars because that mm -hmm. allows access into your home. Mm -hmm. So there was a gift and an opportunity in this. It really heightened our awareness. Um, yeah. I realized that I wasn't as scared. Like this is something that I've thought about in the past, but there is that hyper vigilant saboteur that you know kind of preys on your fear and it mm -hmm. keeps you in a state of you know just not living your best life and i notice that you know in retrospect i look at how much of my life i've lived in that hyper vigilant state and so it's mm -hmm. something that i've actually worked on um, for example <laughs> I have, you know, trackers, thank you, Apple, the find my phone, find my devices um, on my kids, you know, um, their phones. And so I can track them wherever they're at. And the kind of the deal has been as long as I'm paying the phone bill, I can track you. And I make my device trackable um, because I realize it's not like I'm trying to pry into their personal lives. It's I was so hyper vigilant. I was in mm -hmm. fear of something bad happening to them. Now, having a tracker does not keep something bad from happening to them. It just provided this kind of, I don't know, comfort. It was my way of mm -hmm. coping with the fear. And it, but it doesn't actually keep the circumstance from happening. And it kept me in this hyper vigilant state where I was always worrying and constantly checking and so now i i have recognized and i've kind of grown through that that i have it you know and i'm sure there are cases where it will come in handy but i rarely look at it anymore mm -hmm. and um because i've really recognized you know that it was just kind of a buffer for me that checking that constant checking of it so mm -hmm. um when we first moved out here, we're kind of out in the boonies and I used to be kind of afraid of the dark, you know, I'm afraid of all the things I couldn't see. I and am when, now. <laughs> and when I was in that hyper vigilant state, I would be kind of catastrophizing all the bad things that could potentially happen. Mm -hmm. And that was such, you know, a state of unnecessary suffering. So those were all things that I worked on to kind of take me from being hyper vigilant to just vigilant and mm -hmm. this circumstance of being burglarized has really just kind of presented itself as you know a message as you know the opportunity to reevaluate kind of readjust what our best practices are around safety mm -hmm. and so we have like new um, motion sensor lights coming and you know yeah. we're just we're just being more aware and that's yeah. the gift and the opportunity that came from that circumstance and so um those saboteur narratives specifically the hyper vigilant it it's birthed from your biggest strengths and so when i was really struggling with that particular saboteur narrative i had to recognize that it was coming from a strength of being a very sensitive person. I am very aware. I'm very mm -hmm. intentional. Um, I'm aware of like what the true risks are. I remember when my dad was alive, anytime I would go somewhere, he always would have say your to me, wits about you. have your wits about mm -hmm. you, be aware of your surroundings. Like I can still hear his voice. And so I think that that made such a big impression on me that, um, I, that's a strength. You know, and mm -hmm. so I have to be careful though, because your greatest strengths can be overused and abused and they can actually show up in sabotaging ways. And so, um, I'm back to being vigilant. I'm not going to fall into that hyper vigilant, um, narrative and not make this one circumstance mean anything. It obviously didn't mean a lot to you. <laughs> 
hyper. <laughs> no. Uh, I definitely see my hyper vigilance. Well, when I wake up in the middle of the night to sound now, I'm not falling back asleep because I'm like, hmm, who's out there now? Like, I'm the first door when you walk in through our garage. So I'm like, I'm the one that goes first. <laughs> So, yeah, great example of being <laughs> hyper vigilant and being really dramatic in your thinking. Yeah, but what I mean, when you wake up in the middle of the night, it's hard to sit there and self coach. Like, you're fine. Yeah. So, if you're trying to um, determine whether you're vigilant or hyper vigilant, like, ask yourself are you having thoughts that are like, I constantly feel like something bad is about to happen? That is a hypervigilant thought. That is a, that's coming from, you know, a mm -hmm. narrative that will sabotage you if you don't recognize it. Well, um, hypervigilance looks like paranoia. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you might paranoid. have thoughts like if I make one mistake, it's going to lead to a chain of disastrous events. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not capable of handling difficult situations. That's another. So you sit in fear of difficult situations, hard circumstances um, presenting themselves. And you know, you guys, it's like life is full of curveballs. So mm -hmm. if you sit in that hyper vigilant place, or if you're listening to that narrative, you'll be, you'll really find yourself spinning out in fear, in worry. Um, in a state of kind of um, probably buffering, you know, mm -hmm. distracting yourself with unnecessary tasks um, or yeah. maybe buffering with alcohol or food. So just be aware of those saboteur narratives. Um, the hypervigilant is very common. It's, it's pretty universal. Um, and one that I recognized you know, early on in my life and recognized how it was sabotaging me. So, yeah, I feel like for me, the, like going back to like the tracking of the phones, like at this point, I'm like, I give my location to pretty much everyone. Like all of my friends at school, you guys, like even when I'm off her plan, she'll still have my location. So I don't know why she said that, but I, I mean, I'm, I definitely would want it that way. Like, I feel like that's, something that keeps my mind at ease like if anything were to happen to me i would want who anyone and everyone to know what's going on <laughs> well you know, whoever took I you am. would prob probably promptly bring you back <laughs> whatever god <laughs> uh that's how i feel about meatball like <laughs> I actually was thinking about he it last looks night. cute on the outside. No, I was thinking about it last night because I woke up to Bigsby barking at like three in the morning and I was like, okay, if somebody is here, like, do I leave Meatball in my room or do I take him with me? <laughs> take him with you when you run? So funny. Because I'm like, one, he'll give me away. Like if I'm hiding, he'll give me away. And two nobody is going to want to take him. Like, he is... <laughs> One, I think that if they heard a dog barking, they'd run the other way anyways, but... Yeah, way better thought. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I think that my hypervigilance when it comes to stuff like that, especially being a young girl, is, like, going anywhere, I feel like, by myself. I am I do have that kind of, like, eeriness, like, when I'm in especially certain situations but like say I was in Eau Claire where I went to school and I'd be like getting home or like walking home from the bars or something like that by myself it's like I always have that I have that keep your wits about you in my head all the time but um I feel like I always kind of have that in the back of my mind like okay what are we doing if something goes awry like where like but then I also can contrast that with if something, if somebody is really here to take me or if somebody has like motives for whatever to do whatever, like they're me worrying about it is not going to stop them from doing that. Right. So there's no reason to be sitting here on edge about like what's going to happen. Of course, there's things that you can do to put yourself in better situations and not get 
in like scary situations like that or like I always have my pepper spray on me and things like that like always having my wits about me but I feel like there was such a mind shift or a mindset change in me when we talked about this a while back because I feel like I always was like uh, like what's gonna happen now like if I'm by myself like is somebody like following me or like if I was driving home from work by myself or something like that yeah. I feel like I always had that in the back of my mind and so it when you really like take a step back and look at it and you're like if there if something like that is going to happen it's going to happen and it's better to be prepared but to sit and like worry yourself to death is never going to help never even even in the situation like right. sitting there worrying about it like rather than trying to figure out how to get out of it or how to help yourself is never gonna work so right. well that's why there's so much mindset mm -hmm. like um with all of these self-defense mm -hmm. you know tools like yeah. there is an element of mindset mm -hmm. it's like you want to create confidence you want people to believe that they are equipped mm -hmm. to handle those kind of situations yeah um because from a place of confidence you're going to respond in a completely different way right. than if you're coming from a place of fear, mm -hmm. right? Fear is gonna either have you run <laughs> or freeze, mm -hmm. right? And you're probably not going to be able to defend yourself right. from a place of fear in an effective way. Right. Um, whereas if you're confident and feeling equipped, uh, things are going to unfold totally you know, different. Yeah, definitely. So that's a really good example of, you know, what, what is driving your actions? Mm -hmm. Is it fear or is it confidence? Is it control or is it, um, you know, I don't know, un anything unknown, you know, yeah. like I, you really have to check yourself on that because you can behave in the exact same way as you would, you know, um, you can be doing things from a place of fear or you can be doing things from a place of confidence and the whatever you're doing can be the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. But the effectiveness, the results that you get will yeah. look entirely different. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like I could say that better, but <laughs> hopefully you're tracking with us. <laughs> We've given enough examples, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I was trying to think of if there was anything else, but I don't know. It just, it definitely was like really prevalent to me this past year and like just being at school, living in a house of all girls and there were some like crazy, I feel like stories in the news this year with mm -hmm. like people being attacked or murdered in their college homes. And so that always had us on edge at school and like did somebody lock the doors? Like, are we, which again is a measure to like keep yourself safe. So that should always be something that you are like checking in on, but, yeah. um, it, but it like, should be, or we need to puts almost like it's, it makes you feel a little like punitive, like, or, um, you know, that it's a box that you have to check mm -hmm. instead of, I want to, this yeah. makes the most sense. This is me taking responsibility. It's like, yeah. again, it's the same action, right? but what's driving that action is going to ultimately change the result. Mm -hmm. um, Cause the result could be, you've done it one time and you never do it again. Right. Or you are very consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Like that could be the end result. And so you have to look at what feelings are driving your behaviors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, box checking best practices is, I mean, we talk about this all the time in our mm -hmm. group coaching calls, best practices are best practices. Like anybody could Google how to keep yourself safe from, you know, predators. Yeah. And, but you have to look at what feeling is driving your behaviors. What feeling is driving you to take those best practices? Yeah. The result will be different. And so totally. having that awareness is huge. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like, you can't, 
you can't live your life in constant fear. Like, it just, it, you can't be always on edge, like, what's going to happen next or if something bad is going to happen to you. And so it just, I mean, you'd never want to do anything ever. You'd never want to leave the house. And you, then you would start worrying yourself about what's going to happen to you in the house. And so it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like getting out of that fear-based um, state of mind is so important because it's like, you're never going to be able to change. It sabotages your life. Yeah. Yeah. And you're never going to be able to change the the circumstance. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this can obviously be taken to the extreme. We're really not talking about, Mm -hmm. you know, being hyper vigilant is, is just one of those very common universal saboteur narratives that Mm -hmm. we all tend to hear once in a while. Mm -hmm. And the difference is, are we reacting or are we responding? And yeah. But with that being said, there are extreme mental health you know, conditions that um, create an overwhelming sense of fear. And yeah. I would just recommend to people who are at that level to seek professional help. Um, because you know, if you're recognizing that in yourself, that is something that you can work through and you just might need a little bit more of, um, you know, therapy, professional mental health, Mm -hmm. um, support. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anything else? Well, we have business bloopers, but are we done with the vigilance then? I think so. I think, yeah. Okay. Um, what blooper do you want to highlight? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, last week, was it? Yeah. On our call. Last week we had our master class call. Um, Friday. On Fridays we do master classes. Yeah. And I was sitting, the last couple I've sat like kind of off to the side um, in the same room as my mom as she like conducts the call. And then I'll be on video on mute or whatever. Yeah. And these are well rehearsed. <laughs> My God, we've spent hours upon hours upon hours going through the deck of how this call is going to unfold. Yeah. And these are calls that are targeted to people who don't know us. So yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. So thankfully, this wasn't a very big um, well, show. It wasn't a well-attended call. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But we didn't advertise. That's No, that's no, why. no. We're working on perfecting these. So it was intended that it wasn't going to be in front of a bunch of people and so (laughs) she gets like halfway through her uh the master class and my stomach (laughs) made a noise that you would never think would come from a stomach (laughs) it's probably the nicest way to put that and I'm sitting like literally a foot away from her. So of course she hears it. And then well, we're and it on went the on call. for like 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm trying to ignore it. I'm trying I'm wondering if the people that are on the call can hear it. I'm wondering if they think that it's me. <laughs> like all these thoughts are going through my head. But I'm on video still, and so I'm like I am crying at this point. I'm laughing so hard. And then she couldn't help it. So then she started laughing. And then the people on the call were like, what is going on? And we were literally just sitting here for a good, like, minute just crying. We're laughing so hard because... <laughs> Trying to compose ourselves to... Because how stupid. Why am I even in the room anyways? Like, it's not like I'm helping you in here. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, now we know, right? Yeah, I will never, ever, ever sit in here ever again during one of our live calls. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my gosh. And then I could not stop laughing. Like, I literally didn't hear a word she said after that. Like, I literally was crying the rest of the call. And so I had to go off of video because I was being so distracting. It was so bad. It lightened the mood. It was all good. We yeah. learned. There were definitely things that we could take away from it. <laughs> and then... <laughs> no, we're not going to go into that one. <laughs> Why? It's so funny. No. It's so funny. We're not saying names. <laughs> we don't even know the name. So we're on a call today, a group coaching call today, and ve- something very similar <laughs> happened. And... I am again but this very. This one was into the mic. 
I was very into what it was that I was teaching, and so I wasn't sure what the noise was, where it came from. <laughs> and it was just one of those same things where I could see, you know, everybody else like trying to figure out what it was, <laughs> dazed and confused, and then and then people started laughing. It made me laugh because it brought me right back oh to my God. Yeah, that's, I literally was crying. I was laughing so hard because it literally was the exact same thing. Like yeah. we're on, like it wasn't intended for anybody to hear. Right, right. <laughs> Obviously their mute wasn't on. And so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the joys so of funny. Zoom, right? Yeah, it was so funny. I've yeah. heard way worse stories of people doing something on Zoom. But... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've heard lots oh my of God. them, too. It the was horrors. so funny. But, yeah. <laughs> so, everybody can be a little bit more vigilant. And, <laughs> About if, their Zoom if, calls. <laughs> yeah, if their camera and microphone are on <laughs> while they are attending <laughs> yeah. a Zoom call. There you yeah, go. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> All right. So we will be back next week. Yep. With another story of us becoming. Exactly. All we'll right. see you then. Talk to you soon. <laughs>